for Tom, the very first time that he set aside money, he set aside $120. And then he is going to be increasing the amount of money that he set aside by 10 each time, which means that we are looking at an AP. An AP with the first term as 120 and the common difference is 10, which means that in order for us to calculate the total amount of money Tom is setting aside, we need to then find first the number of times that he set aside money between 15th of June all the way until the day when he graduate, which is 30th of June. And this is actually going to be a span of three years and one month. So the total number of times that Tom will be setting aside his money will be three times of one year, three times 12 plus one. It will be 36 plus one, this is 37. And in case you find it difficult or any one of you found it difficult to do this kind of observation, there is one pretty consistent way of doing this. But um, I guess a lot of people, including myself, try to avoid this because it looks silly, but it is very consistent. Let me show you how that can be done. We will actually list down all the possible um, scenarios and we will manually count and hopefully we can see a pattern. For example, on the 15th of June, and we are talking about 2015. This is going to be the first time Tom set aside money. Then after that, it will be 15th of July, 15th of August, 15th of September. Please be patient with me. Then 15th of October, 15th November, 15th December. Then we'll go to the next year, 15th of January, then 15th of February. 15th of March, 15th of April, and 15th of May. And you will realize that these are 12 periods, which means that from June all the way until the next year's May, we are going to be experiencing one year. So from here onwards, it is going to be 15th of June, 2016. And another cycle will continue all the way until 15th of May, 2017. So we have experienced one year, and then we are going to be experiencing another year. Then if I were to just continue, it will be 15th of June, 2017, all the way until 15th of May, 2018. So we are experiencing a third year, then there will be one more month, which is 15th of June, 2018. So 12, 12, 12, three times of 12 plus one. We look silly, but it gets us the answer during the exam. So now we know the number of times it happened is 37, which means that the total amount of money that he is going to be setting aside, the total amount of money, that Tom is going to be setting aside, applying the sum of an AP formula. The number of terms is 37. 37 divided by two, two times of the first term, which is 120, plus the number of terms minus one, 37 minus one times the common difference, which is 10. So the total amount of money that he is going to be setting aside will be one, 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 zero, zero. Upon graduation, Tom is going to be paying back $10,000, which make the amount of money that he owes the bank $40,000. And on the 1st of August, the bank is going to be starting to charge an interest of 0.4%, which means that during that very first month when the interest is being charged, and that is August 2018, after the interest is being charged, Tom will be owing $40,000 multiply by 1.004. And on the second day, the 2nd of August, Tom is going to be paying back $800. So for the second month, on this, in the previous month, Tom will be paying back $800. And on the first day of the second month, the bank is going to continue to charge an interest of 0.4%. So multiply by 1.004. And this will give us a 40,000. Then 1.004 square minus 800 
multiply by 1.004. Let's continue to the third month. So this is September and we're going to go to August. On the 2nd of September, Tom is going to be paying back another $800 as described by the question. So this is the amount that is being owed after the interest was charged in the, on the 2nd of September, on the 1st of September. So on the 2nd of September, this square minus 800, 1.004 will be reduced by another 800. And the bank will start to charge an interest on the 1st of the next month. So multiply this by 1.004. And if I were to expand and rearrange this again, this times this, this will be 40,000, then 1.004 to the power of 3, this times this, it gives me 800 multiplied by 1.004, this times this, gives me another 800 and 1.004 square. And it is minus, minus, I'm going to factorize out minus so that I can work with summation. Okay, it is usually easier when we try to discuss this as a sum of an AP or sum of a GP. So now we have this. Let's move on to one more month, the fourth month. So this was the amount from the previous month, 1.004 to the power of 3 minus away 800 times 1.004 plus 800 multiplied by 1.004 square and Tom will be paying back 800 on the second of the previous month and on the first of the next month the interest is going to be for 0.4 percent so multiply this by 1.004 which will give us a 40,000 then 1.004 to the power of 4 minus this times this it is going to be 800 1.004 and this times this it will be 800 1.004 square then 800 1.004 to the power of 3 and because we are factorizing out all the negative so now we once again has a summation that is inside so what we are seeing is a pattern a pattern that is going to be 40,000 then followed by 1.004. We can see this very consistently 40,000, 1.004, 40,000, 1.004. It is the power that is changing. So the power is the changing term from one row to another row. And we can see that 2 synchronized to 2, 3 synchronized to 3, 4 synchronized to 4, which means that looking at this pattern over here for the nth month, for the nth month, we are looking at 40,000, then 1.004 to the power of n. And the next thing that we realize here is it's going to be minusing off this, which I guess it is pretty obvious. This is a GP. So it is a GP. We are talking about a GP, sum of a GP. A GP with the first term as 800, 1.004, the common ratio, common ratio. The common ratio is since from here to here, here to here, it is multiplied by 1.004. So 1.004 is the common ratio. So from term, from row to row, it is the number of terms that is changing. When it is the second row, there is one term. When it is the third row, there are two terms. Fourth row, there are three terms which means that during the nth row, there will be n minus one number of terms. So I will minus the sum of a GP with the first term as 800, 1.004. The common ratio is 1.004. The number of terms will be one less than this. So four, three, three, two. And this is going to be n minus one. So this minus one, this divided by the common ratio 1.004 minus 1. We can do a quick simplification to this. We should be able to show what the question wants us to show. This will already be this part here. So 40,000 and 1.004 to the power of n. And if I were to take this divided by this, we will be getting a 200800. 
and then 1.004 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1. Shown. To calculate for the date when Tom is able to repay back his loan completely, we are going to make use of the fact that in part 2, we have found out the general amount of money that he's going to owe after the interest is being paid for the end month. And I'm going to let this amount, which is this, so I'm going to let 40,000, then 1.004 to the power of n minus this, then 1.004 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1. I'm going to let this be less than or equal to 800. Let me explain because this represents the amount of money that is being owed after the interest is paid for that particular month, for the end month. So if this amount is less than or equal to 800, please take note, Tom is repaying back $800 every month, which means that the amount of money that he owe, if it is less than or equal to 800, on the second day of that month, Tom will have enough money because he's going to be paying back 800, Tom will have enough money to write off his loan. Okay, so I'm letting this be less than or equal to 800. And I want to calculate a value for n. And to do that, I'm going to press this entire left hand side into my calculator, into the y1 of my calculator. Let me show you what I'm going to be getting. So this is what I will be pressing into my calculator. And the aim is to generate a table. So my from my calculator, if I were to generate a table, I can see from the table that when n is equal to 56, the amount of money that is owed was 700 plus, which means that he is going to be getting enough money, the $800, to repay back that last bit of loan, the 700 plus dollar that he owed. So from here, we can see that the least n is equal to 56. And if you look at 56, 56 is 4 times of 12 plus 8 which means that starting from August 2018, if Tom were to be starting to, I mean, if Tom were to start repaying back the money and the bank is going to be charging him, um, it will take him four years and eight months to repay back. And if you, if any of you can do that observation, we know that for four, for four years and eight months from August 2018, 1st of August 2018, when the banks start to charge money, that means all the way until four years, four years and eight months later, on the second day of that month, which is the 2nd of March, 2nd of March 2023, that will be when Tom is going to be paid back all the money. But like what we were saying, you know, it is not everyone who will be able to observe you know, what does it mean by four years and eight months from 1st of August. So we can do the same thing as what we have done in part one. It looks silly, but it works. So if I were to make use of my experience in part one, if I were to work on the 1st of August 2018, all the way until one year later, which is I'm going to be working, it will be, July 2019. So this, I experienced my first year. Then August again, 2019, all the way until July of 2020. This will be the second year. Then August of 2020, all the way till July of 2021, the third year, and one more year, since we are working on four years, so August 2022, then sorry, 2021, we'll go all the way until July 2022. Okay, so from here, we have experienced four years, which reach July 2022, and we need to add in eight more months. So July, then after that, it is going to be August, September, then uh, it is going to be October, November, December. We have one, two, three, four, five, three more months. Then January, two, zero, two, three. February, two, zero, two, three. One more month, which gives us March. Okay, March, 
2023. And which day of March will Tom be repaying back the money? The 2nd of March 2023. Because that is the time when he's going to be paying back that $800, which will cover this $700 plus that he has owed. He has owed. So now we are talking about Tom paying back in exactly four years, paying back his loan in exactly four years. So four years, we are talking about four multiplied by 12. We are talking about 48 months. And we're going to make use of the amount of money that Tom owes after the interest is being charged during the 48th month. So we are going to use this, letting n be equal to 48. So we are going to go for 40,000. 1.004 to the power of n, which is 48. But instead of this, which we know in the previous part, in part 2, we calculated it as 800 times 1.004 divided by this, but it is no longer going to be 800 in this case because we are supposed to make this a variable. So instead of 800, instead of this 200800, we are going to replace this 800 by x and x is now going to represent the amount of money that tom is going to be repaying back every month so this multiply by 1.004 then 1.004 to the power of um n which is 48 and that will make this 48 minus 1 47 minus 1 and this i'll divide it by 1.004 minus 1 and just like what we did in part in the previous part, this is part four. So I've written this wrongly. This is part four. And just like what we did in the previous part, which was part three, we're going to let this be less than or equal to X, less than or equal to, um, to the amount of money that Tom is going to be paying back on the second day of that particular month. Okay, so by doing so, we will make sure that Tom repays back everything in exactly four years. So now let's make x the subject. I'm going to bring this over to the right hand side. So we have a uh, x plus x of 1.004. Then 1.004 to the power of 47 minus 1. This divided by 1.004 minus 1. And this is going to be bigger or equal to this, which is 40,000 and 1.004 to the power of 48. Factorizing out x and dividing the coefficient over to the other side, it is going to be 40,000. And we have this as 1.004 to the power of 48 divided by this, which is 1 plus 1 1.004. 4 to the power of 47 minus 1 divided by 1.004 minus 1 and this is equal to 917.55 which means that in order for Tom to achieve this he needs to pay back at least 917.55 so the additional amount that he's going to be paying back will be I will take 917.55 minus the original the original was 800 so I'll minus away 800 and this gives me a 117.55 and since the question one asks to round this off to the nearest whole number that means the additional amount of money that Tom will be repaying back will be approximately 118 dollars